Hi, everybody. Craig Shacklett here, CEO of UR Comp to Trio 360. I have got, back by popular demand, a super special guest. We have got the host whisperer himself, Nick Ippolito. Nick. Name the... coined by you, the host whisperer. <laughs> Trademark. Put the TM next to it. Trademark. <laughs> well, for the 0.01% uh, of people, especially in the casino industry, uh, that don't know you, uh, tell us about yourself and, and what you do. The negative 0.1%. My name, I am Nick Ippolito. I've been in uh, the uh, casino industry and really just player development for the last uh, 30. I'm sitting here with a buddy of mine, and uh, we were talking about it the other day. About 35 years now it's been. Started out in Atlantic City many, many, many years ago and done nothing but player development all these years. And about 12, 15 years ago, uh, I started traveling to all these properties all over the world, all over Canada, overseas, all over America, uh, tribal or independently owned. And uh, I, I, I have a niche. Uh, no one does what I do. No one does it the way I do it. I develop the training. And um, I'm known for uh, making hosts salespeople. You know, I, many, many years ago in Vegas, I, I said, uh, we're in sales. We're, we're not maintenance. You know, we're in sales. And uh, since then, it's just been an incredible, you know, 15 years of traveling and seeing all these different markets, every different demographic market, um, city, country, state. Just amazing. Just meeting so many different hosts and you know, different personalities of hosts and different cultures of hosts and different experience of hosts and uh, PD leaders. And it's just been amazing. It's just been wonderful. And I and I love, we were just talking about it now, that I love that so many people have adapted. You, you yourself, you know, uh, so many companies and people, individuals, leaders, other consulting companies have adapted to everything that I teach and everything I brought to the industry. You know what I mean? It's so fulfilling. It's so great to see how PD has turned around and really come out. You know, even your guy, one of your guys, he puts on his LinkedIn, the PD training, PD training today. And I look it up thinking it's a guy like me and it's a CRM program. You know what I mean? But it's <laughs> one, it, no, but it's wonderful that we're doing that. It's wonderful. We really, really brought it. We all bring an attention to the PD department. Well, and I think a lot of people, because we can go on for, we'd have a five hour interview if we wanted. So we're not gonna cover a lot of the things we covered in that last interview, but I encourage anybody that didn't see it, go on, on YouTube uh, and find the interview with Nick and I uh, from, I guess it was two years ago, but we covered a lot of great stuff. We don't wanna rehash. It was COVID, mohawk. It was COVID and I had a mohawk. So yeah, was... <laughs> the mohawk interview. Uh, so now we're gonna cover some new ground. And I know you've got a lot of cool new stuff you've launched, so I'm going to ask you about that in a little bit. But I think since we do have some players that will watch this, uh, not industry people, and there's you know different players have different expectations, what do you think at a, at a high level, what should a player, what's a fair thing for a player to expect from an on-property casino host? First, let me tell you that I'm sitting here having breakfast at Fantasy Springs in, uh, in Coachella in Indio. Gorgeous casino, beautiful casino, great customer service, great PD program here at Fantasy Springs. I'm also sitting here with a good friend of mine, Augie Trevano. Hi, guys. Hey, Augie, how are you, sir? I'm honored to be here with Mr. Nicky Polito. Uh, Augie's the PD manager at Spotlight 29, which is right next door to Fantasy. And we just did some training there uh, last month and this month and trained his casino hosts. So he's sitting here in the interview. So I might have him uh, pipe in if he needs to. Uh, the question is, what should a player expect from their host? Yeah, what are some reasonable expectations? Because I think some players think, oh, he's my 24-7 concierge, and some may expect something else. Well, and what do you think? This is interesting, Craig, because I happen to know that you and I have not argued, but we've, we've – We've come to a crossroad every now and then about this subject, you and I in particular. Um, and it's because your software is self-efficient and a wonderful, wonderful software. Um, and, I, and I understand that a player can maybe bully a host or expect too much of a host. And my, my training and my coaching and my initial answer to this question is going to be this. And I tell hosts this, 
A host should be different. If different's the right word. A host should be different than any other employee in the casino. If the host is the same as a front desk clerk or a reward center clerk or, um, or a dealer or a pit boss, then why are you my host? Then what is the value of the host? Uh, uh, a front desk clerk answers their phone when they're on the property, when they're on their shift, and after their shift, they go home to their family, and you cannot get a hold of them. A player can't call and go, I want to check in with Jessica, and Jessica comes, comes in from home and checks the player in. That doesn't exist. Rightly so. It shouldn't have been. So I always encourage a host to be different, to be a step above, different's the wrong word, to be a step above than any other employee, to have value, to have value as a host, to have value over every other employee on the property. Now, that being said, this is what you and I always get from a host. So if I'm in the movie theater with my kids, I have to answer my phone? Of course not. Of course not. But do you have to at least follow up with that player? Absolutely. And you have to say, hey, Craig, in the movie theater with my eight-year-old and my 12-year-old. And any human being is going to understand that and go, I am so sorry, Craig. Are you off today? It's okay that I'm off. I want to help you. Let me get through the movie theater with my kids and it, I'll get, right? There has to be follow-up. I have to be, look, when I want to come to the property, I want to come to the property. My day timer is open, right? My wife's nagging at me. Are we going? Are we going? Going, are we going up the tanker? We're going up the tanker, we're going up the tanker. And I'm texting my host, I need an answer, right? So to it to ghost me, even in dating and uh, interviews and everything we do in life, right? Ghosting is the worst thing. Just be I teach my host, be real, be transparent, be humanistic. I'm at a bar mitzvah. I can't talk right now, but I I swear I'll follow up with you. Or if you're going on vacation then the phone is forwarded to your other host or to your VIP services. Oh, he's on vacation, but he told me you were going to call. Like, what is the value, right? You have to give that value. I'm not saying you have to answer your call. You know, hosts ask me continually uh, where I go. Did you answer your phone at 3 o'clock in the morning? And not only did I answer my phone at 3 in the morning, I got up, put my clothes on, put my suit on, and drove to the strip, right, to get the guy who was screaming and yelling because he was down 20000 in the pit, right? So not only did I answer my phone, but I got, I got up and I got and I drove in. No, I'm not asking hosts to do that. But you have to cover all your bases. You have to be exceptional. You have to have value to these players. No, they don't walk all over you. They don't treat you. They don't mistreat you. They don't abuse you. Of course not. But you have to. Where is the value is, is all I'm going to answer that with. Yep. What well, great answer. And I think you covered really well, like the, the time expectation that like, Hey, listen, you are there to serve your players. And it's, this isn't a nine to five. What about, um, I guess beyond just the, the time or accessibility, like I think maybe some players think, okay, I get my offers in the mail, but I know I can call my host and he's always going to give me more. And maybe that's, uh, spoiling players or, I mean, you tell me what you think. Um, do you think most hosts do a good job setting proper expectations with their players, whether it be time or just like, hey, what what I can do and what I can't do for you. It, it's different everywhere I go. There's the exceptional host. There's the exceptional host that just go out of their way. They go out of their way to, to deliver not only the sales that I teach, but the hospitality portion that I teach, right? And hospitality is a huge piece of this, right? It's a huge piece. Here's what I always teach. Players have one job, Craig, to gamble. That's it. That's it. The host does everything else for them, right? Now, as far as discretionary comps and direct mail, you know, the whole thing is convoluted and screwed up. Direct mail, marketing, college kids, they've, they've, they've screwed this whole thing up for us, for PD, right? It, it's just, it's a muck. It's a muddy, muddy water now with all this direct mail and all this free play and all these uh, uh, comp and discretionary and comp bucket. Um, some places have a comp bucket and there's no discretionary comps. Some places have allow their host to do this. You know this. I mean, you're 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 traveled as much as I am. Um, some hosts uh, are allowed to do discretionary comp. Um, you know, it, it, it's good. It comes down to if I can go to the kiosk and get my comp all the time, I don't need a host anymore, right? So, um, 
and which is sad. Where's the VIP moment? Where's the where's the hospitality moment? You know, um, they all have to have an understanding the difference between overcomped player and an unprofitable player. Those are two different types of people. Right. And when you look at comps, you have to look at, well, yeah, the uh, the steak in the coffee shop was uh, seventy two dollars. Right. But it was a frozen the steak that Chili's gives me, right? So it didn't cost the coffee shop $72, right? You're charging my player $72. You're charging my comp $70. See, there's so many things you have to look at. Hard costs, soft costs, who's getting the hockey games, who's getting the, the Bucks games, who's getting the game, right? And then who's getting the softer comps? Um, how much free play are we giving them? Um, it's a it's a very broad question, Very, and I can't give a direct answer, so... No, that's but fair. A good, host, a good host knows how to talk to his player and no, definitely knows how to manage his player. And I teach sales, right? So if a guy asks me for 300 in comps and he's worth 300 in comps, he's not getting 300 in comps. Players that are listening, just so you know, we have to play poker. It's a gambling facility, right? So I'm going to hold a little bit. A good host is going to hold on. Gonna hold on because an hour later you're gonna want free play. An hour later you're gonna want a butler. An hour later you're gonna want a limo ride, an Uber. Right now I've spent it all on this big dinner, right? So a good host knows how to negotiate and play poker. No, I think that's fair. I think at the end that was maybe what I I should have phrased it that way because you answered uh, you answered really well. And I think at the end though that that's really uh, you touched on something smart where it's I think some hosts before they go into your training are just like here's what I can offer you. And they offer everything. And then dollars, you know, the ball. Why'd you cop him three hundred and twenty? Well, he had it in his comp block, right? Like that's ridiculous, you know. Yeah, exactly. Knowing that every player is always gonna ask for a little bit more. And I think it's smart. That's one of the many good things that you do in your training is like teach people that here's what a player's going to do. So just prepare for that. Right. And it's not uh, if a player's listening, it's not hurting the player. It's budgeting you, right? It's knowing your habits. It's knowing your history. It's knowing what you're going to ask. It's avoiding that uncomfortable, you know, moment later when I have to say no to you. So a good host sets it up where I don't have to say no to him. I got, I teach hosts your comps are your budget. So if I give you a hundred thousand in, in comps, Craig, and you give that to one player, you're not fired, but every other player you have to say no to. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Yep. That's your budget of comps. You do it at what you want, right? Yep. Well, and I should add too, if for you are comp customers watching, we do we negotiate all the comps up front. And I'm mainly talking about back end comps where on property a player played a lot and he wants more and more. And um, and I think that's something that your training is just next level on like helping hosts have that conversation without damaging the relationship. One thing I want to ask you about or they ahead, are incentive to play more. Yep. <laughs> Nick, what are what are your views on free play? Uh, the bane of our existence, the worst thing to happen in our industry. Why? Uh, many reasons. One, uh, it's, it's, you know, I have a great uh, meme I put on LinkedIn with uh, Dave, Dave Chappelle as Crackhead Joe, you know, and he says, you got all got any of that free play? You know, it's, be <laughs> it's become the essence of the business. It's become all the player wants. It becomes all the player sees. It became all what the player thinks they're worth. So the the player, you know, levels that and 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 negotiates with that, and and they think it's free. And so let me ask you this, Greg: What's the price of free play? Do you know what free play costs? No, I don't. Nobody can answer me. So in the comments below, I'd like to see everybody's answer on what does free play cost, because nobody can give me. A, everybody gives me a different answer, or they say they don't know. Is it a hard cost? Is it, does it affect the drop? Does it affect the whole percentage? Does it affect the Theo? Does it affect the points? Does it affect, do you, do you hold the host accountable to the percentage of it? Um, uh, you know, I think it's the bane of our existence, but it ain't going away. I wrote Donald Trump a letter when he was in office and I said, please get rid of free play. Please get rid of it throughout, throughout the, the industry. I, I didn't get an answer from that, from, from that letter, but I think that it can be used for, uh, it could be used, it could be used not tricky, but in a negotiation, it could be used for inactive players. It could be used for people who I live too far away. Well, uh, give me your gas receipt. I'll give you back double in free play. I mean, it can, there, there is, it can be used for properties that don't have a lot of amenities. They have no steakhouse, they have no hotel. Yeah, then up your free play. 
I, I, I strongly suggest that it is only in the direct mail piece and hosts do not dispense it because then hosts are looked upon. I see players nowadays walk in the host offices and go, I want my free play. Not how are you? Not how's the kids? Not I had a great time. Not I'm having a really nice time. They want all they want that you, you're just this free play where free play comes out of your mouth, right? You're a dispenser of free play. <laughs> there was one team I trained not long ago, and after my training, they said, We're going to tell all the players we're not allowed to do it anymore. It should be in the direct mail, and it should be here's what players are doing they'll drive two hours out of their way to come back home. And they know I'll stop here and get 150 in free play. Then I stop here. I got my 80 in free play. And I, you know, and, and marketing doesn't drive revenue. There, I freaking said it. PD drives revenue. Marketing drives trips. Every list I pull up these days, all the players are playing 12 minutes, 2 minutes, 8 minutes, 12 minutes, 11 minutes. They're burning off their free play and going home. So it's driving trip. It's not driving revenue. So... When somebody can really define how much we're making off free play and, and what kind of tool it is and what the cost is, I'm in. Until then, I think it's, it's muddying the waters. Now, you touched on driving trips versus driving revenue, and I think I know where you're going with it, but why don't you expand? Like, how does the PD make it so it's not an eight-minute trip? It's, it's longer. It's revenue instead of just a trip. He makes an eight-minute trip, they're fired. Marketing goes home on Friday. They go for wine and sushi, and they have a good laugh, and they – they sent 100,000 pieces in direct. I'm dead after this. I'm dead after this. I don't care. I'm, I, I'm doing this on purpose because I'm challenging it, right? I'm not being a I'm, uh, Oops, sorry. I'm, I'm trying to challenge this. I want this conversation. And the only way I can get this conversation to happen is to have this things like this with you, media, you know, like this with you. So I'm not being a jerk. I just I just want the conversation to be to be known. No, I think... Uh... Why isn't there a warning on the direct mail piece that said you have to give us a minimum of an hour of play or a minimum of three hours of play? Why? Why? If a host, my point to you is if a host books somebody and they play for eight minutes and go home, they're fired. Right. And I, and I think there's, it's the relationship aspect that you, you instill that if play, a host drove them in, they're not going to just burn the host because of that relationship. So they're going to say hi to the host. Host's going to talk to them. They're going to check in and they're going to have several hours of play instead of I'm just, you know, going up to a kiosk. I got my free play. I'm playing it and I'm walking out the door. Yeah. And a host, I only pat a host on the back for growth and the trips they drove, not people who live five minutes away. Host isn't driving that trip, right? Those players live off their drive. I hope Darren, uh, Daryl, sorry, Darren, Daryl. I hope Daryl at Potawatomi is watching this because his mind's melting right now because Daryl is an executive host at Potawatomi in Milwaukee, and we've had intense, intense conversations about what exactly free play is. And, and I take it you two disagree? No, we don't know. We're, no, yeah. we never, him and I are very, we, we don't disagree at all. We challenge each other, and we don't, nobody knows the answer. Yeah, it is interesting, because I've always thought, like, the free play is arbitrary. It's like some people, oh, it's 50% on the dollar. It's dollar for dollar. It's 10 cents. There's one jurisdiction was like, well, we get taxed for every dollar we give out. So then I'm like, okay, it makes sense why you give out less. But yeah, for the, aside from those jurisdictions, it is just kind of, what does the accountant decide, right? Yeah. But uh, we can't get rid of it because if one place stops it, the other place will do it triple, right? So yep. it's the bane of our existence. So we talked about free play. How about theoretical and points? Do you have any thoughts on those? Yeah, of course I do. So I'm, I'm working on it right now that I teach ADT and I teach theoretical. And for some reason, the other meme I put on there on LinkedIn the other day was, uh, tell me again why we don't tell players about theoretical. So the, the theoretical formula, you know, is uh, average bet, hours played, uh, whole percentage, and the pace of the game. Nowhere in the theoretical uh, 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 formula is win-loss or points or anything like that, right? And, and, if, and if, when hosts say to me, well, we rather tell players points, then I say, all right, well, then tell them points. So if I say to a player, you either up your average bet, right, or give me more time, that's pretty self-explanatory. Up your average bet or give me more time on the device, on the game, right? That gives you more theoretical, and then I can comp you. 
Well, if it's points, then I say to the host, okay, so then how many points do they need to get the, the steak dinner? Or how many points do they need to go to the game? Oh, I don't know. So again, that's my point. Let's have the conversation. Is it go get me 10,000 more points? You've got to give the host something to say. They want to say points to their player. They want to say, give me more points. You can't just say, give me more points, right? We have to have it now. Guess what? You know how you get more points? More average bet and more time. So it, all, yep. it doesn't matter. It all comes to the same formula, right? And if you're quick loss, I'll copy on the quick loss. But what is the point uh, ratio? What? Let's educate our hosts. Let's educate PD on a plan for this, for the points, right? And, you know, I think there should be, I'm a genius. I'm a genius because there should be a hosted tier. Not a secret tier, but a hosted tier. And that hosted tier should be uh, strictly worth an ADT, not points, not tier. So I'm a black card. I'm the I'm your highest tier, and I have a 28 ADT because I come every day. Yeah, we don't touch you. You get your free play. You get your blender. You get your point, whatever. But now I have a hosted tier that's theoretically driven and worth driven, and it's called a hosted tier, and I have a host. A lot of GMs will say to me, I want all our black cards hosted. Why? I go, why? Tell me why. They come 28 times a month. They have a 28 ADT. And the host aren't, isn't driving that business. They live off your direct mail and your calendar. So leave them alone. They can still be a black card. They still get their blender. They still get their comps. But we have to identify a hosted tier for the host, for PD. We're having a hard time with marketing. I know we're not, we're not saying it. They host whisper it to me, but I'm here to say it, right? We're having a hard time with this because it's a it's becoming siloed mm -hmm. it's making our coach look i'll tell a guy listen you got to play more you got to do and then maybe then marketing gives him the gives him a comp you know what i mean or he gets the comp in the mail i say to somebody i can't give you a room comp on a friday but he gets it in the mail yep so there's a there's a there's a there's silos going on the reason you'd want that 2880t player that's there every day to not have a host is because that takes up time they probably take up more time than the players any other player and they're not you're, you're correct but i don't even say i don't want him to have a host everybody's his host that's what i would say to a black card player and if he said to me i want a host i go you actually have seven hosts all the ambassadors are your hosts all the hosts are your hosts all the right you don't have a specific one because that's how important you are to us but you're right they not that they don't need a host they're not driven by a host why pay a host? Why bonus a host? Why pat a host on the back for somebody who lives 10 minutes away? They come every day. You're not going to lose them. That host comes to Vegas with me. That player's still going to go to that property. Oh, he was such a nice guy. Can I have my comp? <laughs> Two seconds of loyalty, right? So it's not so much they don't need it. Um, yeah, need. That's a good word. It's not. It's, it's, it's inefficient. Yeah. Now, why do, why do you think more casinos haven't? Because what you're saying makes total sense. And I would agree with you. Why do you think more casinos haven't uh, taken this approach? Because I, I don't think uh, the, the GMs and vice president CFOs, you know, they look at PD on a whole. You know, that's all. They don't look at individually like I do. Like when when you get down to a PD level, we're looking, you know, we're, we're analyzing individually. We're not looking at numbers on a whole, you know. Um, and I think it's never been explained to them. I think, you know, a lot of times the GM says, I want everybody, I want black card. Go to all, and he walks away, and everybody's afraid of him, except for me, right? I'll go. Well, well, I'll challenge you on that, right? There's nothing wrong with challenging. It's not disrespectful, um, but I think it's understanding that you won't lose business. You won't lose. I know what they're worried about, you know. Uh, and I'm not saying they don't get a host. I'm saying they can have all the ambassadors. They can have all the VIP service people, right? I'm not. There's a way to do it. There, there's. I'm not going to call a host and go. Uh, you're. You don't. I'm not going to call a player a black card player and go. Yeah, you don't have a host anymore. But then you know that's ridiculous, right? That you know. So there's a way of doing it. So maybe it's been presented wrong. Maybe it's you know the you know PD leaders are saying, well, it's taking up too much of the host's time. That that's the wrong approach to say to a GM or a CEO, right? because they're valuable players. They keep the lights on, they pay the bills. So I don't want it to be where I'm saying they don't need to be host coded and, and I want to lose them. I want them, right? But there's there's a level in there, there's another level in there that's hostable and hosted and, you know, uh, the 80-20 rule, right? 20-80 rule, whatever the, whatever. The, so you mentioned PD leaders, um, you know, should have these conversations, you know, 
not confront the GMs, but you know, make this case. Uh, uh, I think I'm intelligent to a CFO or a CEO or a GM. You have to be intelligent. You can't be a a dumb slot host like me, right? You got to be intelligent. You got to do your homework. You got to have your numbers. You got to follow the money. You got to you got to have your uh, when he says, well, what if the black people, the black car players get pissed and leave? You got to have a backup. You have to have a system. It's a program. It's not just an idea. Oh, they're taking too much time from my hopes. That, that means nothing to an educated CEO, right? That's a silly thing to say to somebody. You know, I'm uneducated, but I know that. I know I wouldn't say that to somebody who's educated. So you have to have a program. You have to have a critical path. You have to have a plan for this. So now you're starting to talk about more higher level, strategic level things. I think, mean, you know, being the host whisperer, a lot of people maybe think, hey, you, you know, you just train hosts. But I think uh, I saw on LinkedIn, you're also starting to mentor PD leaders. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. So just yep. because you're a great host doesn't mean you're a great PD leader. And that's the mistake I see uh, a lot of casinos are making. Uh, they take a great host and they put them in charge of PD. Or a host that from another property comes over to a new property and says, I want to be in charge of PD. Not that it cannot happen. There's many. I can name them and they're friends of mine, many successful crossovers. But you gotta watch the ones that are not a successful crossover, right? Uh, that's it, I'm about to lose you. Um, if I lose you, we're gonna, I'm gonna have to charge and come back. But you, the scenario okay. is this, the scenario is this, you're in a rock band and the guitar player is the greatest guitar player in the world, right? So you're gonna take him out of the band and he's the manager of the band? <laughs> Right. So with leadership, you have to, if you're going to hire leaders, PD leaders, don't forget, it's not just that I was a good host. They have to go to leadership classes. They have to understand how to lead, how to motivate. Uh, it's not walking around going, well, when I was a host, I smoked it. When I was a host, I was great. When I was a host, I did that. That doesn't motivate anybody, right? It's, it's almost coming to work every day and saying to the host, I work for you. What do you need from me today? to make your job successful, to make you make the production, to help you make, what do you need for me to help you? It's not all this, uh, you know, over accountability stuff. And I was a great host and I was a great host. Again, there's many that have crossovered beautifully, right? They were great hosts and now they're phenomenal PD leaders, but you gotta, you, I don't want companies, I don't want casinos to take it so lightly. The answer is not, you know, why did you make him a PD leader? Well, he was a great host. If that's the only reason, then that's not the reason. And so I go in and I mentor PD leaders. And I because and I was at one point at one time in my life, I was a horrible PD leader because I was a great host. So I had many great mentors, Tom Bonani, Joe Jimenez, uh, John Fernandez, many great mentors that pulled me aside and said, this is how you lead. This is how you motivate. This is how you inspire. So I learned it the right way, you know, by doing it wrong first and then getting good mentors. So I definitely go in now and I use those those uh, experiences that were taught to me to help PD leaders, you know, motivate and grow and, and lead their team. So, uh, so I think it's a great answer. So one thing you mentioned that's key to being a PD leader is kind of a servant mindset, going to the host saying, hey, how do I clear roadblocks for you to be successful? Um, what about from like, let's say a, a metric standpoint? So you got the mindset is that, but is there something that you tell new leaders, hey, look, here's a North Star, here's what I think you should focus on um, when, you're, when you're looking at numbers to drive performance? You know what's so great about this question? I was gonna bring it up with you and optics and GQC and CCB and Elemental P and all these other uh, CRMs and stuff and PD leaders. My new thing, Craig, and believe me, you know, you know this. Two years ago, I was an advocate, but we're spending too much time making host check boxes and make notes. And I touched these people. And these are the calls I made. The bottom line is conversion rate and production. If you don't make your calls and you still make your bonus and your production, then your bonus and your production program's wrong. And I'm, I'm coming across a lot of programs that go, yeah, this host does nothing, but they're making their numbers. So, well, first of all, it's not the host's fault. And second of all, there's something wrong with your program. It, they don't need more accountability. They don't need to check off more boxes. 
and do more calls. If you make 500 calls, Craig, and only book two people, and I make three calls and book four people, I'm better than you. So it all comes down to conversion rate and production. Uh, we have been spending too much time almost harassing the host, right, to do all, click all these bots. So I was going to get with a lot of you guys with your CRMs and see what the answer is, you know. Maybe there's an automatic, and I don't know if yours has that, but I make a call. I don't want to spend time checking boxes and, oh, did I do my 60 calls today? And, and what are we doing anyway? We're faking it, right? We're going down the list going, voicemail, 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 voicemail. okay, I made my 60 calls, right? The bottom line is look at your production programs, look at your bonus programs, which I will help you with, and make them work for you. Don't don't make it be more accountability. And more. A host's job is to do player development. That, the players have one job to gamble, and a host has one job to do player development, right? So uh, these last few years, I'm really getting away from being an advocate of all this checking box. You know what I'm saying, right, by checking yep. box marking off the thing and i made this call and i touched this many guests at the end of the day it doesn't matter listen if your host says well i sent 43 emails yesterday then the next day you should say to the host well open up your emails it's a company computer <laughs> open up the emails how many people even opened the email oh three people opened it two people responded 40 people didn't even open their email why don't you try the phone today right why don't you try texting them today so that's more important than getting a report at the end of every quarter. Uh, and I know a, a bunch of directors of PD right now are, 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 are getting mad at this, but it really is. I have to be honest. I, I, I am with the host. I am sitting with them. I make calls with them. I'm in a different casino every week making calls with hosts. And I have to agree with them. It's a waste. It's, it's, it's a waste. The end of the day is the conversion rate. And at the end of the day, it's your production. And if they're making their production and their bonus by doing nothing, it's not the host's fault. It's your program. I'm with you 100%. Uh, I hate doing work and then going back and logging that you did work because that's <laughs> it's painful. So, uh, yeah, that is something that we are. Uh, it doesn't work. It's inefficient. No, no, it's very inefficient. It's uh, it's a beating. It's uh, discouraging. No one likes that. The activity should be logged automatically. Now, you you see somebody that we're not say, logged at all in the conversion and the production but go ahead the uh, you find somebody that is making the 500 activities and they're only converting one trip um obviously first step is you know book nick Ippolito to come out to train the team but let's say it's a pd leader that you know you're you're booked up for a year uh what what is something that they should do in the meantime to like drill in on what's what is wrong with this guy's conversion rate just what we said a minute ago, right? It's not saying, well, when I was a host, I kicked ass, right? It's saying, let me help you. What did you do yesterday? You know, did you do emails yesterday? Yes. Okay, pull them up. Did you do text messages? I have recordings of text messages uh, that hosts do that have no response to them. But yet, you, you know, the definition of insanity, right? Why are you still doing it? They're not answering you. And the host was, well, maybe the player this, well, maybe the player doesn't want, no. That's not the answer. The answer is drill down and, and how do we get the conversion rate? So the PD leader sits with the host and says, look, I know you're making your touches. I know you're making your calls, but you're not on pace this quarter. Let's work. Let's let's figure this out. Are the lists bad? I just went over some lists. Sometimes I sit with hosts and lists are just bad, right? Everybody, we're here, we are in California and everybody in the list lives in Virginia. And the other half <laughs> is self -defense. And the other half had a jackpot. And the, so let's really, uh, I just told a, a couple PD leaders, you can't just, I say to them, do we have lists to make calls? And the PD leader says, yeah, the host had their list. That's not the answer, guys. Guys, that's not the answer. The, I don't care if you give them 10, 10 names a day individually, but you got to clean the list. You got to look at the list. You got to say, here's 10 good leads. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, baby, right? Here's 10 good leads. And the next day you go, how did those 10, because that's only 10, right? The next day you go, how did those 10, how did that 10 go, right? And I give them the tricks to find phone numbers, to Google them, to get to, to find the player, to work on that. But too many PD leaders are going, well, they have their list. That's not the answer. They have their list. And when I sit with a host, a good host, and you pull up their inactive list, what do they say? He's in Greece. He had a heart attack. She has COVID. She died. He went bankrupt. They know the top inactive players anyway. There's no growth. You're not. So again, it comes down to being inefficient. You're only hurting your business. The hosts don't care. 
and I don't care, right? But you're hurting the business. There's plenty of lists out there. You got to get creative with lists. And I've said this from the beginning. There is not many of us, me, John Fernandez, and I don't even know who else, but Tom Bonani, that really wrap their head around PD lists, that really get into the data. You know, I'll say to a group, uh, what are the hosts coded to? 318 above. So where's the 299, Craig? Where's the 250? Where's the 280? Where's the 200s? I need to convert those people, right? So there's so much we miss out there and we blame the host, but there's so much we miss out there by not really drilling down on those lists and analyzing those lists. Marketing's not going to do it. Database guy ain't going to do it. Uh, they don't know how to do it and they shouldn't do it. It's going to take a PD guy to really define those lists. Well, Nick, I could go on for an hour asking you questions, but this, but, this uh, video is uh, going to get I'm, 10 million views because we, I really open cans of worms here, but I don't care. We have to, I'm not, again, please, everyone, please. I'm not being a jerk. I'm just trying to get the conversations that we are not having to happen. And what's happening in PD is that typical thing. It happens in every uh, industry and every department in the casino where, well, we've been doing that for 15 years. And we're at that point now in PD where we're repeating ourselves now. And we blame marketing. We blame slots for doing it. We blame food and beverage. Well, the food and beverage guy has been here 30 years, so that's all he knows. But guess what? Now PD is starting to fall into that. And I see it. I see it now. We're, we're not challenging ourselves. We're not trying to break the mold. We're not trying to say, well, we've done this for 15 years. Is it working? <laughs> you know? Um, uh, so that, that's all. I'm not being a jerk. I'm just, I just want to challenge us and I want to, and I don't know the answers. I'm not saying I'm a know-it-all. I want to hear from people. I want to hear it. Hey, we know we're always going to get the authentic, unfiltered Nick Ippolito. Unfortunately, it's the bane of my existence. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Nick, we got to do this again. It, it can't be every two years because there's too much good stuff going on. My, my bad, man. I, you know, I always think we can't because I'm traveling, but I'm, this is perfect time to be doing it. I know. It's a great background. You're in beautiful uh, Palm Springs, yeah. right? So I'll check in with you time to time. I really will. I, lo I love doing this with you. Hey, I, I love it too, Nick. Hey, have a great rest of the trip. I know you're going to be whispering and, and changing a lot of host lives and careers. So uh, have a great one, and we will see you soon. You too, buddy boy. Thanks, man.